Hi, I am Dr. Renis Davis, Professor and Head of the Department of Pulmonology at Amala Institute of Medical Sciences, Trishu. Warm good afternoon to all. Today I will be speaking on the most unwanted guest of the current period, the black fungus or otherwise known as mucormycosis. I will be going on with the introduction the causes, the clinical features, the diagnosis, how we treat this black fungus and what all prophylactic measures we have to take and what is the overall prognosis of uh, individuals with uh, black fungus and uh, ultimately I will conclude with the do's and don'ts. So what is uh, this mucromycosis? It's a fungal infection mainly affecting people, I will call the vulnerable group that means with uh, some medical issues, health problems that reduces uh, their ability to fight against these kind of environmental pathogens. If you look at the taxonomy of uh, mucromycosis, uh, it, in, uh, it belongs to the kingdom fungi, division is uh, Zygomycota, class is Mucormycotina, which comes under the order Mucorales of family Mucoraceae and the genus Muco. So how does uh, someone get this uh, Mucormycosis? Though the fungus is universal, the people get this mycormycosis through contact with the fungal spores in the environment. Probably it may be inhalational route, sometimes ingestion or in a inoculation. For example, the, the lung or the sinus uh, forms of this infection can occur with uh, if the susceptible individual inhales the spores of this fungus from the air. That is the inhalational route. The host immunity usually prevents the germination of uh, these spores into uh, hyphae. But if the host factors are defective or they are vulnerable, then that favors the invasive mucormycosis. This fungus is uh, angio invasive, that means it invades through the vessel and can reach everywhere. Is mucormycosis contagious? If I am infective with mucus, will you get that one if uh, we come within one meter distance? The answer is no. The mucormycosis can't spread between people or between people and animals. So what predisposes for this fungi? The most important is diabetes, that to uncontrolled one. Especially with the diabetic ketoacidosis, because this acidosis will give a good platform for the growth of this fungus. Then cancers or those who are on chemotherapy or radiotherapy or, or during the post-op period when their immunity is less, that predisposes for this fungal infection. The individuals who are post-organ transplant or stem cell transplants or those who are neutropenics where their WBC or white blood cell count is very low due to some reason, due to some bone marrow disease or some chemotherapy or drug induced, they have to be careful about this fungus. Then long-term corticosteroid use, especially in the scenario of uh, Corona or COVID. Uh, the use of steroids should be very judicious, otherwise it produces uncontrolled sugars and predisposes for mucormycosis. Too much iron in the body or the iron overload, we call it hemochromatosis. Iron is also a good uh, platform for the fungus to grow. Then skin injury due to surgery or burns or wounds. 
and the, the prematurity itself uh, predisposes uh, to this fungi and also the low birth weight babies for neonatal and gastrointestinal mucormycosis they are also predisposed for this black fungus so how does this uh, patient get predisposed to mucormycosis i told you the main five culprits or the individuals who are prone for these infections are one those who have some comorbidities like uh, uncontrolled diabetes then post transplant or in some malignancy who are immunosuppressed by uh, steroids or some immunosuppressants like uh, recent days uh, which we used for cytokine storm like uh, tocilizumab or barsitinib or any maps or nips which may produce some kind of immunomodulation can predispose for this black fungus then the voriconazole therapy this is another antifungal of uh, the voriconazole which uh, may not be effective for mucormycosis so once we give this voriconazole that induces the suppression of the other fungus and augment this mucor to invade and grow further so voriconazole is actually contraindicated in cases of mucormycosis then the prolonged icu stay where their uh, nutritional status is defective sometimes the, the immune status goes down and uh, they are exposed to all this fungus near around so the prolonged icu stay can also predispose for mucormycosis so that is what is happening during this uh, covid era so coming to the clinical features uh, depending on the region of involvement we can divide this my mucormycosis to rhino cerebral or pulmonary if includes the if it invades the lung sometimes gastrointestinal due to some in ingestional uh, factors of this uh, fungus then cutaneous or disseminated so for a rhino uh, orbital cerebral which we are we usually come across uh, around 60 to 70 percentage they are rhino orbital which can produce uh, cranial nerve palsies uh, cavernous sinus thrombosis black scars cranial neuropathies with cranial nerve palsies bone destructions frontal lobe necrosis abscesses and sometimes aneurysms and if it goes for pulmonary in invasion it produces usually produces fever non productive cough increase uh, dyspnea pleuritic chest pain sometimes hemoptysis and they can produce pulmonary infarcts pleural effusions and fungal balls or myositomas if it goes for a cutaneous kind of usually this fungus when they in it gets into the skin or deep tissue they dissect down through the soft tissue to produce the black scars then gastrointestinal the patient can have even a necrotizing enterocolitis with all this abdominal pain diarrhea blood in stools fever and abdominal distension and the other forms are dissemination and sometimes they can present uh, they can have the presentations of unusual kinds so mainly rhino orbital cerebral uh, the second way is pulmonary and few gastrointestinal cutaneous and the disseminated forms and unusual forms are also in the literature so if you google through you can see thousands of images showing different kinds of uh, mucormycosis involving the face eyes and so on so the, these figures which i am showing right now are mild forms which uh, don't may make you fear of this black fungus but there are very a fearful kind of uh, pictures in the net 
if you look have a look through it you will be scared of as well as they are all you come to know like these are deadly when to suspect in a covid 19 patients or this uh, diabetic patients or immunosuppressed or any vulnerable groups there will be some sinusitis with some nasal blockage or congestion or sometimes you may even get a, a discharges of blackish kind or bloody kind there will be local pain or tenderness on the cheekbones or sinuses and one-sided uh, facial pain numbness or swelling the blackish discoloration over bridge of the nose or palate toothache loosening of teeth and jaw involvement blurred or double vision with the pain fever and uh, skin lesions you can identify the thrombosis or necrosis or eschar esh and uh, usually in the chest they have pain pleural effusion hemoptysis and worsening of uh, respiratory symptoms with uh, fever cough and dyspnea so watch out th these symptoms because you have to identify it very early otherwise it will be detrimental and the fungus may be deadly so before it turns fatal you have to see or identify these red flag signs like pain redness around eyes or nose fever headache coughing shortness of breath bloody vomitus and the altered mental status in a susceptible patient which i told you like uh, diabetic uncontrolled sugars then having a uh, history of uh, cancer or covid 19 on treatment or on immunosuppressants or those who are having the long icu stays and etc so these, these are few other images of uh, cutaneous forms of uh, black ash scar and uh, in the uh, near nose over the sinus and uh, in the heart palate and even uh, the pus with the mucor seen in the sphenoidal sinuses so if you get an x-ray done you may see sometimes uh, myositomas and sometimes the effusion or pleural fluid uh, then you can see over a city chest you can uh, see the fungal balls with the cavitations or surrounding uh, the ground glass opacities of, or consolidation and uh, x-ray may even show some scattered opacities uh, of uh, fungal kinds and uh, you can if you do a bronchoscopy you can have a view showing uh, some amount of uh, plagues or uh, uh, some uh, polypodial growth kind of uh, with uh, some uh, necrotization or pus then uh, the, if you uh, get, uh, culture these areas uh, you will get a, uh, uh, a mucor colony uh, which, which is a white kind of uh, microscopically white kind of it's contradictory to the name black fungus the colonies are white and the the, the microscopy may shows the uh, the non-branching hyphae as well as uh, the spores of uh, fungus this is a resected specimen, specimen is showing the uh, the fungal area with the black ash car and the, the necrotization and the cavitations. So how will you diagnose? Uh, the, the main point is uh, the high index of suspicion in a susceptible person. The CSF and the X-ray usually are not informative. MRI is the most useful kind. Um, mode of uh, investigation uh, which can uh, diagnose uh, the bony infiltrations or the uh, the fungus as such the biopsy for a histopathological proof which may show hyphae or mycelia or the spores of this uh, mucor and even you can uh, culture which may give you the white colonies so these are the high phase and uh, spores of uh, the fungus um, in a resected specimen of involved area of uh, mucus sorry mucor 
it may even invade the orbital area and take off your eye sometimes the sinuses the nasal or uh, this kind of uh, deformity it can uh, produce over the face with the black ash cars and uh, you can see the the the, uh, uh, the bony erosions in a uh, plain ct even or uh, mri and uh, you can see the fungal colonies and uh, the mycelia hyphae or uh, the spores in a biopsy specimen so why this uh, black fungus came in this covid scenario it's a tsunami kind of you might have heard in a, especially in indian scenario of covid yeah. in the second curve it came as a tsunami so why this mucor is more common in covid covid is more common in diabetes as a whole and they run a lethal course and the neutrophilic function and immunity is decreased uh, in all diabetes and one of the accepted uh, uh, treatment for this covid is uh, steroids in a high dose the steroid cause immunosuppression as you all know and it predisposes to mucor so the steroid use use in covid should be contained to 10 days or maximum 14 days and that too as per the guidelines and if it's uncontrolled sugars you have to tackle it with insulin you have to control the sugars and if they are on some immunosuppressions you have to stop that and most of the diabetes uh, they have this cd4 and cd8 counts decrease especially in covid disease so that gives the good platform for the, the for the mucor mycosis to grow and cause invasive diseases so yet to be proven or doubtful uh, why this mucor in uh, second curve which was not so uh, known in uh, other countries or uh, like uh, uk or uh, why it's not there in uh, was not there in the first curve of uh, this covid so maybe the variant uh, involved we have, we are uh, coming across with a lot of variants of interest and various variants of concerns like alpha beta delta and all the stuff we are recently from uh, maharashtra and a few other states of india probably we have become more confident or on treating covid in the first curve with uh, or uh, steroids and uh, the immunosuppressants suppressants like uh, uh, the tocilizumab or uh, uh, sarilumab or some other maps or uh, itolizumab or some uh, nips like uh, tofacitinib or bacitinib okay so probably these uh, use of uh, immunosuppressants or inadvertent use of uh, antibiotics Uh, like azithromycin doxycycline and even carbapenems in the very early stages of covid-19 infections then some, uh, the improper usage of oxygen especially in during the scarcity period we have uh, used sometimes uh, i mean the industrial we have we, we have to be dependent on some industrial industrial sources poorly maintained contaminated cylinders might have intruded in then sometimes say uh, maybe use of zinc uh, and other immune boost boosters uh, burns in uh, lower respiratory tract following steam inhalation uh, people used to inhale inhale and inhale a lot of times during a day period uh, uh, reusage of uh, mask i don't know how often you are changing the mask uh, usually the masks are single use uh, but if you, you want to reuse you have to clean it and only for 24 hours basically and uh, then um, if you are cleaning it uh, put it in uh, i mean sunlight for at least 3 days and then can only you uh, you can uh, reuse the n95 or uh, or most of them are not reusable and sometimes uh, the the which is not proven is uh, whether the water used in our humidifiers in uh, or um, the non invasive ventilators or uh, icu uh, whether they are sterile or not or whether they contain some the spores or mycelia of this mucor these are all questionable i am not telling like there is there is no proven 
the studies for uh, the involvement of all these but uh, you should be Sherlock Holmes uh, during this current scenario of more black fungus in the in COVID. So how can I lower the risk of uh, mucromycosis? It's difficult to avoid the breathing in uh, uh, the breathing in of uh, these fungal spores because the fungi is um, omnivorous or it's uh, there everywhere and um, that, that's common in the environment and uh, there is no vaccine to prevent this uh, mucromycosis as such and for people who have weakened immune systems there may be some ways to lower the chances of developing uh, uh, mucromycosis so protect yourself from the environment uh, the, uh, it's important to note that although these actions are recommended uh, they have not been proven to prevent mucromycosis uh, the recommendations are to uh, try to avoid the areas with a lot of dust like a uh, construction sites or excavation sites if you can't avoid these areas wear an n95 respirator and uh, avoid uh, direct contact with the uh, water damaged buildings and flood water after hurricanes and natural disasters avoid activities that involve close contact to soil or dust such as uh, the yard work or gardening so how to prevent uh, use masks if you are visiting dusty construction sites wear shoes long pants and a long sleeved shirt when doing outdoor activities such as gardening and yard work or visiting wooded areas wear gloves when handling materials such as soil moss or manure to reduce the chances of developing a skin infection clean skin injuries well with the soap and water especially if they have been exposed to soil or dust maintain a good personal hygiene including a thorough scrub bath and the diabetes should control their sugars that's most important so how to manage uh, uh, you have to control your diabetes and uh, if ketoacidosis is there uh, you treat that diabetic ketoacidosis reduce steroids uh, if patient is still on with the aim to discontinue rapidly if it's within uh, two weeks and discontinue the immunomodulating drugs no antifungal prophylaxis is needed the extensive surgical debridement to remove all necrotic uh, materials your ENT colleague or surgeon can uh, help you out medical treatment I will uh, come in the uh, coming slides install peripherally inserted uh, central catheters maintain uh, adequate uh, systemic hydration and infuse normal saline IV before this amphotericin B, which is the drug of choice for this mucomycosis. Uh, and that has to be given at least four to six weeks. Uh, I will come to the guidelines and monitor the patients clinically and with the radio imaging for a response and to detect the disease progression. So antifungal medication, uh, the uh, drug of choice is liposomal amphotericin B, five milligram per kilogram per day or and or isavuconazole which is, which is 200 milligram eight hourly for six doses for two days then followed by iv or oral of oh, 200 milligram of isavuconazole or iv 12 to 24 hours after the last dose and continue the regimen for at least uh, three weeks and uh, preferably six weeks but the cost is the main limiting factor uh, high cost of these uh, antifungals like uh, uh, liposomal amphotericin B and uh, isovaconazole will come in lakhs for uh, a, uh, for a, uh, one, one and a half months of treatment. And if a clinical radiological improvement start, you can switch over to posaconazole tablets, uh, which are uh, of 300 milligram per day or isovaconazole uh, tablets but the targeted drug monitoring should be there and goal should be to keep it more than one microgram per ml then urgent con surgery consult is a must for this rhino cerebral disease for targeted resection and debridement because even the dead fungus can invade the vessels or the bone so you have to go more invasive and take off all the debrided tissue and a, a, some part of a normal margins otherwise the, the 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 you have to 
continue with the debridement process in the future also if the disease is not getting limited by the your uh, antifungals the control of uh, sugars or uh, ketoacidosis is a must and uh, the tapering of steroids should be attempted and stop if uh, if possible and the if the patient is on immunosuppressants uh, stop it all of sudden and uh, take care of the fungus at the earliest so there is some limited evidence for this granulocyte um, colony stimulating factors um, GC, gmcsf or gcsf interferon gammas and uh, wbc transfusions have been tried and a hyperbaric option if available for localized disease and the doctors and scientists are still learning about uh, which patients are at high risk and how to best prevent these fungal infections uh, even non covid areas and regarding mortality uh, this is not to scare you around 62 to 65 percentage dies off with uh, rhino cerebral forms around 24 to 25 percentage uh, goes away with uh, cyanorbital and if it's uh, even if it's a single sinus isolated sinus form of mycormycosis around 16 percentage mortality is still there and don't get alarmed by gastrointestinal forms which take away life of around 85 percentage of mycormycosis if it involves your gi tract uh, with the most of them uh, getting uh, necrotizing enterocolitis and uh, disseminated forms i am not going to scare you with uh, the figure it has got very very high mortality so what are do's and don'ts uh, e, uh, the e, uh, do's the first of all control sugars control hypergly uh, hyperglycemia monitor the blood glucose level post covid uh, discharges discharged patients also especially if they are diabetes use steroid and antibiotics uh, judiciously use clean sterile water for humidifiers during oxygen therapy use antibiotics and antifungal judiciously the reason i told you if you give oriconazole or fluconazole that will promote the suppression of other fungal or fungus in the body and gets the peak of uh, this uh, and uh, the mucormycosis so they should be uh, they are contraindicated and what are the don'ts do not miss the warning signs and symptoms that is why i am uploading this uh, this uh, teaching module uh, to the nurses all healthcare workers and doctors to get the warning signs and symptoms at the earliest so that we don't delay the treatment and um, um, get the disease as soon as possible for a debridement and the medical therapy don't consider all cases of uh, blood noses as cases of bacterial sinusitis especially in the scenario of some uh, immunosuppression or uh, covid 19 um, patients on uh, immunomodulators uh, and don't hesitate in uh, seeking uh, aggressive investigations as appropriate for uh, detecting fungal etiology don't lose crucial time to initiate the treatment for micromycosis always a team approach works best don't uh, manage individually because you may have to get the help of a microbiologist for the diagnosis you have to get the help of internal medicine specialist or an intensivist sometimes a neurologist or an ENT specialist uh, has to get involved especially an ophthalmologist if uh, orbital area is in getting involved a dental surgeon if uh, maxillofacial uh, part is getting involved or even a plastic surgeon uh, uh, will be doing uh, best of uh, their part in managing mucormycosis so get the help of uh, all these team members
Thank you.